What you're watching right now is a live recording of me taking out a $2,000 loan in about 15 seconds. No papers to sign, no permission to ask, and no ID to even verify. Let's peek behind the DeFi curtains and see how dApps like Aave and Compound allow people to take out instant loans and allow people to earn amazing interest. From an early age, we're all taught that our money belongs in a bank, where it's nice and safe. Right, We're taught that opening a savings account and saving as much money as possible is the smartest decision that we can make. And we also learn about these magical savings accounts where our money grows by itself. But when you look it up, interest rates of 0.02% don't sound too magical, do they? And getting charged a $7 fee every time your balance falls under $500 isn't very magical either. But who cares, right? Every penny counts. My money is making money just for sitting in a bank. Well, what if I told you you're wrong and you're actually losing money by leaving it in the bank? There's a saying that goes, holding money in a bank account is like holding an ice cube on a hot summer day. Let's start with problem number one, the invisible tax. Inflation slowly eats away your buying power, even though the amount of money you own doesn't change. Many factors can cause inflation, but recently, government money printers have been the biggest culprit. All right, guys, so look at it like this. Say there's a gaming arcade called Uncle Sam's, and there's 10 game machines you can play, and each game costs one ticket, right? You own five tickets, and you keep that in a bank account, which pays you 0.01 tickets per year to hold them there. Uncle Sam's arcade then decides to print out 1,000 new tickets and give them out for free to attract more people to the arcade. Since the number of machines hasn't changed, there are now way more tickets chasing the same amount of machines. So what does the arcade have to do? Well, they have to double the cost of play to balance the new supply. It now costs two tickets per game. Before the big printing happened, your five tickets that you had saved up would have gotten you five plays. But now, your five tickets can only get you two plays. The ticket prices have just experienced inflation, and this is why it's called the invisible tax. But why is the bank at fault? They had nothing to do with the inflation, right? Well, they're not at fault. But while you think your tickets are locked away in a vault down the street, the bank is actually using your tickets to play games, win prizes, earn more tickets, sell those tickets, and then in return, give you crumbs of the winnings. So the bank is not only using your money to beat inflation themselves, but using your money to generate profit and not cut you in. Does it finally make sense why banks spend so much money and time advertising the save your money narrative? All right, now we know the two problems that plague our money, right? Number one is inflation, and number two is banks taking advantage of our cash. Now, only if there were apps which loaned out our savings just like banks do, except give us most of the profits. Maybe then we'd receive enough interest to beat inflation and ideally even earn money on top. Let me introduce you to Aave and Compound. These are DeFi banks which anonymously connect borrowers and lenders of many different crypto assets. Here's how they work. At the core, Aave is anonymously connecting borrower and lender. Each crypto asset on these apps has one big community pool, right? So if I deposit USDC into the USDC pool, I'm a lender. If I borrow USDC from the USDC pool, I'm a borrower. If the USDC pool is close to full with deposits and not many people are borrowing, the deposit interest rate will be low. Right? And on the flip side, if the USDC pool is close to empty because a lot of people are borrowing USDC, then the interest rate will be high to reward new and existing deposits. The interest rates earned and interest rates paid are all determined by simple supply and demand on both sides. Borrowers pay interest to take out loans, and that interest goes directly to the depositors. Everybody wins. Aave is simply the lifeguard at each crypto pool, enforcing the rules and making sure no one can borrow more than they have deposited in collateral. Now, keep in mind, you can deposit into any pool and you can also borrow from any pool. You can mix and match. Okay, but what is collateral? Is my money safe in there? Can people run off with their loans? I'm glad you asked. So in the banking world, non-personal loans require some form of collateral before you can borrow cash. Usually this can be assets like your home, your car, your motorcycle, etc. However, your collateral must be worth more than the amount you are borrowing, just in case you run off with the money or can't pay back the loan. If that happens, the bank will seize your collateral and sell it to get their money back. Aave is similar, except your crypto assets are your collateral. On Aave, in order to take a loan, keep these three things in mind. One, your collateral doesn't have to be in the form of the asset you want to borrow. For example, I can use my Ethereum as collateral and borrow USDC. Number two, your collateral has to always be worth a decent amount more than your loan. And number three, you need to manage your loan's health 
so that the collateral is always worth a good amount more than your loan is. And the limits vary. This is why it's best practice to borrow a small percent of your collateral to protect yourself from huge price drops. Okay, example time, right? So let's say you have $10,000 of Ethereum, which you don't plan on selling anytime soon. Instead of having it collect dust in your wallet, you can deposit it into Aave and use it as collateral if you ever needed a loan. And the interest you'll get on ETH is minimal, but hey, it's better than nothing. And you love your ETH, right? And believe that in five years, it will be worth 10 times the price it is today. So the last thing you want to do is sell it. But suddenly your paycheck gets delayed and a $1,000 emergency pops up right? That's life. What you can do is use your $10,000 of Ethereum as collateral and borrow the $1,000 you need in the form of USDC to cover your emergency. You just took a loan against your crypto. There is no time limit. Since you have more money inside Aave than your loan outside of Aave, it's up to you when you want to pay it back. And I mean, obviously you need to pay the interest on the loan whenever you do decide to pay it back. But let's say after you cover your emergency, more bills come up, right? And you can't pay back the $1,000 right away using US dollars. A cool feature Aave has is the option to use your Ethereum or your collateral to pay back the loan with that instead. Aave will automatically accept it, sell it, and free you of your debt. It's pretty awesome, right? Okay, that's cool, but what if I just wanna park my dollars in Aave and let it collect interest? Do I need to own something like Ethereum and be exposed to the price movements? Well, of course not. Crypto isn't only for volatile speculative assets. Matter of fact, stablecoins are actually a better version of real life currency. Stablecoins are still cryptocurrencies, except their price is pegged to real world assets, like the US dollar, for example. So one die will always equal one US dollar. Same with USDC. You can buy stablecoins with your dollars on any exchange and deposit that to Aave instead. So that way you have no risk of price swings and your money is being lent out to other people all over the world and earning you interest. Looking through Aave or Compound, you're probably wondering why do these stablecoins always pay the best interest? Well, the answer is simple because they are the most in-demand assets for borrowers. When people take loans for whatever reason, stablecoins are the most predictable, right? You know the amount you borrow won't drop in value before you can use it. Okay, this all sounds great, but how does Aave make money, right? What's the catch? There has to be a catch. First, you have to understand that Aave is a decentralized entity. While in 2017, Aave did start as a small team of developers which made all the decisions, but today, Aave token holders are the ones who control the future of this platform by using their Aave tokens as voting power. Aave's coin is similar to a share of a company, right? Except in DeFi, these votes hold equal weight all around and there's no executive person up there that has the power to shut down a vote. Anyone can purchase Aave coins and immediately become a voting member of the community. The more Aave you own, the more voting power you hold. Members can also come together and delegate their voting power to a single person so that anybody can become an influential voice in the community, even if they don't have the financial means to become that. DeFi truly democratizes our financial systems. Simply put, Aave is governed by its community and users, so is its treasury, which is where all the profit that the platform makes ends up in. That's right, instead of banks taking 99.9% .9 of profits from your earned interest, Aave only takes about 11% as of this video. I reached out to a talented engineer who is a core contributor in the Aave ecosystem, Mark Zeller. He showed me the weekly report, which is public, and that confirmed that Aave users get around 90% of all interest earned from their money. Now, keep in mind that that 11% of profits isn't going to some higher up suits or owners. It's going to a community chest, the treasury. And this treasury is actually controlled by you or anybody that wants to participate in the Aave community. So really that 11% is helping grow the value of your Aave tokens indirectly. To sum it up, yes, Aave does make money, but you make most of it. Okay, but can't banks just reduce the profits they make and compete with DeFi apps like Aave? Yeah, banks willingly reducing their profits. Good joke. Even in a universe where that would be possible, let's look at some of the crazy features Aave has, which banks can't compete with. Feature number one is swapping collateral, right? Picture this, maybe you hear some news that you think may cause Ethereum to go down in price, and Ethereum happens to be your collateral in Aave, and you have a loan out, right? This can cause problems. So Aave has a swap feature where you can swap your collateral for another asset. So what you do is swap your ETH for DAI, whose price won't move and your loan is protected against depreciating collateral. Pretty cool stuff, right? Number two, another game-changing feature and a favorite of mine is the payback with collateral feature. Basically, if you have $10,000 of Ethereum acting as your collateral, and let's say you have a $1,000 loan out from a month ago, 
you can just tell Aave to sell $1,000 worth of your Ethereum and pay back your debt. Instead of having to buy 1,000 more DAI on an exchange, sending it to MetaMask and then repaying it that way, this is way easier. Such a game changer. Number three, finally, this next feature gives borrowers really cool options. Like I mentioned earlier, the interest rates for deposits and loans change in real time to follow supply and demand. But Aave has a feature where you can lock in a fixed interest rate for a loan and you're promised to only pay that. This kind of incentivizes people to take out loans when it's quiet on the platform, right? Just a few months ago, you could lock in a stablecoin loan for about 3 to 4%. Now, if we look at the markets, all the fixed loan rates are in the double digits. I can't stress enough how huge over collateralized loans are for DeFi and people in general. I'm also excited for the next frontier, which is delegating your loans to people who don't put up collateral. If you've made it to the end, guys, I appreciate you watching. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.